In the previous lectures of this course, we have learned in bits and pieces what is JSX expression and how it works behind the scenes. Now, in this lecture, let's have a closer look on JSX syntax. And let's learn what actually happens when we use JSX syntax in our React application. Every React project has this package.json file where the list of dependencies have been mentioned. So here we have this dependencies section. And in this section, you can see all the dependencies, all the dependent package on which our project is dependent on. And the two main dependencies here is this react-dom package and this react package. These are the two main packages for creating a react application. Now, where are we using these packages? If I go to index.js, here you will notice that we are importing this React object from this React package. And we are also importing this React DOM object from this React hyphen DOM package. So, using this React DOM object, we are calling this create root method. And using that, we are creating the root element. And inside that root element, we are rendering our app component. But where are we using this React object? We are not using this React object anywhere in this file. So what we can do is we can remove this import statement and our application should still work. So if I go to the web page, our application is still working. But in the older versions of React, it is mandatory to import the React object from the React package in all component files. But in the latest versions of React, that is not mandatory. So let's first understand the use of this React object. So basically, when we are writing this JSX expression here, and when this project will be compiled, this JSX expression will be converted into JavaScript code. And when it will be converted into JavaScript code, at that time, it will call a method called create element. And this create element method is present inside the React object. Okay, so from this products component, we are returning an li element. So when this project will be compiled, behind the scenes, this react dot create element method will be called. Okay, now this create element method is present inside this react object. So to use this react object, we need to import it from react package. But here, this create element method of this react object will be called behind the scenes. Here, we are not working with this react object directly, right? So in the older versions of react, even if we are not working with the react object directly, since we are dependent on that react object, we need to explicitly import it in our component file. But in the latest versions of react, we don't have to include this import statement because in this case, in the latest versions of React, this React object will be imported implicitly by the React project. That's why if you are working in a project where the older version of React is being used, there you will find this import statement in every component file. Now, in the newer versions of React also, we are indirectly dependent on this React object because behind the scenes, the create element method of this React object will be called to create these elements. So it's always a good practice to explicitly import this React object from this React package in all our component files. And that's what I'm going to do here. So we have imported this React object from this React package in this products component. Let's do the same thing in this products detail component and also in this button component. So at the top, I will import this react object and let's do the same thing in this app.js as well. So this app.js is also a component file, right? So here also let's import this react object from this react package. All right. Now let's go to this product details.js file. So from this product details component, we are returning this JSX expression. And just now we learned that when this project will be compiled, this JSX expression will be converted into a JavaScript code. And in that JavaScript code, there will be a call to create element method of the React object. 
Now we use JSX expression because JSX expression is easy to understand and it is familiar to us because we have already used HTML and this JSX expression is very similar to HTML. But instead of returning the JSX element, we can also return a JavaScript object. In simple terms, we can create these elements using JavaScript using the create element method of the react object. Let's see how we can do that. So for now, I will comment this code here and let's try to return the same elements from this product details component using JavaScript. So let me comment it here. And let's say we want to return this div element. So for that, I'm going to use this react object and on this we have this create element method. Now this create element method takes three parameters. The first parameter is the element which you want to create. So here we want to create the div element. So we can specify that div as a string. Then the second argument is an anonymous object. And in this anonymous object, you can specify the attributes for that element as the property. So for example, this div element is having one attribute, which is this class name. So we can specify this class name as a property of this anonymous object. And the value of that property will be this value, which we are assigning to this class name attribute. So let me copy this from here and let's paste it here. Okay. Then the third argument of this create element method is the content which we have between the opening and closing element. So here we are creating this div element. So whatever content we want within the opening and closing div element that we can specify here. So for this div element, we want to have this h6 element as its content. Then we also want to have this custom button element as its content. In the same way, we also want to have this span element as its content. Okay, so let's see how we can do that. So again, the content of this div element is again an HTML element. So again, we need to create this HTML element, right? So after this comma, let's move to next line. Okay. And we need to create this H6 element. So again, let's say react.create element. And this time we want to create H6 element. Then we can specify anonymous object. And this H6 element again is having a class name attribute. So this attribute we can specify as the property of this anonymous object. And to this, we can assign this value. Okay. In the same way, this H6 element also have this style attribute. So again, this style attribute, we can specify as the property of this object. And to this style attribute, we need to assign an object. And inside this object, we can specify the style as the key value pair. So first of all, we want to set this margin right to 30 pixel. I'll copy this and inside this object, I will set it. Okay, so here we only have one style. Now we can also write this margin right like this. Okay, in that case, we don't need to use these quotes. And actually, this is the proper way of setting styles in React. If you write it like this in this case also it will work but you will get some warning in the console okay so the proper way is by writing it like this okay then we also need to specify the content which we want to have with, within this h6 element so let's use comma here and actually this comma should be here and here the content which we want is this value okay so we want to have this dollar sign and after that we want to use the price property of this props object so let me copy it from here and let's use it here all right so this h6 element has been created now we want to create this button element and remember that this button element is the custom element. It is a component. So to create it, what we need to do is we again need to call the create element method of this react object. 
and we need to specify which element do we want to create so since this button element is a custom element we need not to write it like this okay instead if you notice we are importing this button function from this button.js file so we can simply go ahead and specify it like this okay it should not be within quotes then on this button element we don't have any attributes so we can pass an empty object or we can also pass null here okay and finally we need to specify the content which we want in between the opening and closing button element so for that i will use string like this and here in between the opening and closing button element i want to show this minus sign okay in the same way let's go ahead and let's create this span element this button element and this span element with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page and you will notice that this application is still working but this time instead of returning the jsx expression we are returning some javascript code we are returning a javascript object and here we are returning only one javascript object okay we are creating this div element and we are returning that div element inside this div element we are creating these elements okay but at the end we are returning only one object and that's why in the previous lectures we learned that when we want to return more than one element using the jsx expression we need to wrap it within some container element like we are doing here we are wrapping this h6 element this button element this span element within this div element and at the end we are returning only one div element that's because this create element method can only create one element at a time now if we don't have this div element this wrapper element in that case we will have to return these five elements but using this return statement we can only return one element at a time one value at a time right so i hope now it is clear why we need to wrap the multiple elements which we want to return from our jsx expression within a container element all right so this jsx expression will be converted to this javascript code behind the scenes when the project will be compiled now as a developer which approach seems better to you using jsx expression or using javascript well this jsx expression is easy to write and easy to understand we can also use javascript to do the same thing but using javascript is a bit cumbersome as you can see here as the number of element in your component grows this code might become a little bit complex and hard to maintain and hard to understand and that's why instead of using the plain javascript we use jsx expression so this is what i wanted to show you in this lecture what happens behind the scenes when we use jsx expression now let me go ahead and let me comment this javascript code here and let's uncomment this jsx expression let's save the changes let's go to the web page and this is how our application looks okay so if you have any questions from this lecture then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day